In this video, I'm going to work through the calculating market potential exercise on page 3.16 and 3.17 of the text. And um, I've already uh, drawn the matrix that appears on page 3.16 of the text just to save you the tedium of me drawing that during the runtime of this video. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly label... Um, a couple points on this matrix so we'll start with the locations there are two locations A and B and I'll label those this is A and this is B and then there are three market areas one of them is here one of them is here and one of them is here and this is M1 M2 and this is the third market area Okay, and uh, so the goal is to calculate the market potential of each of the locations. I think we'll just go through one of these examples. We'll, we'll, I'll show you how to calculate the market potential. We'll call that T of uh, location A. So we're calculating the market potential of this location here. And that is equal to, in the numerators, um, in the first numerator of the um, of the of the first item in our equation we have uh, total aggregate sales available at a particular market location and this is going to be um, this this first term in this equation is going to be for market area one so if I just scroll up this first term is going to correspond to this market area here so y is equal to the aggregate sales that are available at that particular market area. And then that's divided by the distance from that market location to the location that we're considering, um, location A. So divided by that distance, and that distance is raised to the power of B, which is a constant. Um, that scales for the importance of distance. So the higher B is, uh, the greater the importance um, distance plays in this equation. Um, and then we add on uh, the same terms for uh, subsequent market areas. So this will be for, I'm not going to put subscripts on here, but uh, this will be for market area 2, and then this one will be for market area 3. And you could keep going if you had other market areas, but in this case, we just have the three. So, for the first one, um, so we need the value for the numerator, and we're told that uh, the aggregate sales that are available at any particular market location correspond to the number of households at that location. And specifically, 20% uh, of the households uh, at a particular market location make a purchase. So um, the textbook indicates that at market location one, there are 15,000 households and that 20% of all households make a purchase. So that means that aggregate sales for this location are going to be um, 3,000. So 3,000. And then that's going to be divided by distance. Uh, raise the power of B. So distance is the slightly tricky part. So what we want to know is the distance between location A and this market area. So we want to know the length of this line essentially. Now the way we're going to find the length of that line is by recognizing or uh, I should put that slightly differently. The way we're going to find the length of that line is by using our knowledge about the length of this line and the length of this line and then recognizing that the shape we have here is a right angled triangle and if we know the length of this side and the length of this side we can find the length of the longest side of that right angled triangle which is called the hypotenuse so if we just draw a triangle that looks like that over here, if we call this uh, length A and this length B, this length C, then we, we can use the equation that says that A squared plus B squared 
is equal to c squared. So in this particular case, we see that the length of this is 10, and the length here is also 10. So 10 squared plus 10 squared is equal to c squared. That means that 100 plus 100 is equal to c squared. And 200, if we add those together, 100 plus 100 is 200 equals c squared. And now, in order to find c, we just need to take the square root of both sides of that equation. So if we take the square root of 200, the square root of c squared, then we end up with the square root of 200 equals c. So we now know the distance between this location and this market, which is the square root of 200. So we can input that into our equation down here. So the distance, square root of 200. And that distance is raised to the power of 2. Uh, because b, I don't know if I mentioned that uh, before, but b in our uh, scenario here is equal to 2. And that's just something that's given in the textbook. Okay, now let me... So let's do the next location. So plus, for the next location we have 50,000 households. Uh, and again, 20% of those households make a purchase. So that means that the numerator is going to be 10,000 over the distance between our location here and the market. So we want to find this distance here. And again, we're going to do that the same way that we did before. So we can see that the length on the bottom here is 20. The length on the side is 20. And so we can use the same equation that we used before, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And we'll plug in what the values for a and b should be, which is 20 squared plus 20 squared is equal to c squared. That is going to be 400 plus 400 is equal to c squared. So 800 is equal to c squared. And then we'll take the square root both sides so that we get the square root of 800 is equal to c. So that's the length of this side here, the square root of 800. So we can put that in here, square root of 800, that's d, and then we raise it to the power of 2, which is our value for b. Now finally, we just need to, uh, for the final term in our equation, we just need to find the distance between our market location and our location A here. So the length of this, and that's pretty easy. We don't need to use any geometry for that. We can just recognize that the length of this is equal to 10. So plus, we know what's on the bottom here, 10. And then we're raising it to the power of 2 as usual. And then on the top, we need the aggregate sales. And that's going to be, if there are 20,000 households and 20% of those make a purchase, that's going to be 4,000. Now, I'm not going to uh, actually pull up my calculator and do this calculation, but I'm going to trust that the book is correct. And uh, if, if you actually work through this calculation, I believe you'll get 67.5 as being the market potential of location A. So hopefully that uh, helps um, in giving you a, a, an idea of how to go through this, these, uh, these sorts of calculations and um, hopefully see that it's not quite so complicated as you might have uh, thought at first.